Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 18th. First off, I would like to thank the many contributors this week, Jose Angel, Brenda J., and Catherine S. for the various articles here. And the credit for each individual article will be in the description with the links below. First up, this is from Mashable, an umbrella that protects you from rain with just air but lasts only 30 minutes. Um, I don't know, only lasts 30 minutes? That's not too bad, really. I mean, how many people use a, an umbrella for longer than that anyway? I just use my umbrella to get in and out of the car and to wherever I'm getting to. Uh, this is not the first time somebody's come up with the idea of an air jet um, umbrella using air blast to deflect the air away, but this is the first one that actually has been fully funded as a Kickstarter project. And there's a little video you can watch here, too. Uh, I'd just like to see some demonstrations of it when it does come to market, too, to see how effective it is. A lot of times in Chicago, along with rainstorms, we have some pretty severe side blasts of air and stuff like that. So I'm wondering, you know, it's nice on a calm day when the air is just falling down. You could probably divert it with some air blasts. But I'm kind of wondering how this thing will work when you have a real stormy, gusty conditions, how, how good that will actually do. But good that they got funded on the uh, idea in uh Maybe this time it will actually be a workable project, product. And next up, this is from Gizmodo. The transforming tablet phone combo costs just $200. This is using an Asus phone that I guess is not really too bad of a phone, but I guess it's just not up to the power of running this tablet, according to the author here, Sean Hollister, who did a review of it. And he said also the fact that you can... Uh, get a pretty decent tablet that's probably as good or better than this for $99 itself. But I think the basic idea of taking a phone and sliding it into a device and converting it into a tablet is pretty good if you have a decent phone. If they would translate this idea to a more powerful phone like, say, an iPhone 4 or 5 or make it with a Samsung uh, Galaxy S3, something like that or better, it would probably be pretty decent. You could just make it compatible with those two basic phones that have some power to them and then get a pretty decent device out of it. But, uh, yeah, as far as this, it's uh, probably usable, but not much better than that. He said when he tried playing video games, then it did stuttered and dropped some frame rates and stuff like that. Also, during use, the battery really gets sucked down. It, it idles well, and if you're not using it, the battery lasts a long time. But as far as if you have to uh, actually use it, it really sucks some battery juice down. And this next one is also from Mashable. New battery said to recharge in minutes and last 20 years. This is another one, too, that I think maybe one aspect of it is still not ready for prime time. I mean, the, the specs of this battery that they've developed in a laboratory are pretty good. It has 10,000 cycles instead of like a normal battery it has like about 500 cycles before it starts really getting bad and deteriorating. And, you know, like if you've ever had a lithium battery in your laptop and you've used it for a couple of years, it's just not up to snuff. It doesn't charge as well, and it gets used up faster, and it just never gets up to full charge anymore. But the one thing about this, it uses a chemical uh, called titanium dioxide, which is very abundant, but it uses them in these strands that are pretty much like nanotubes. So I know in laboratories they can produce several thousand at a time to produce individual batteries, but you're going to have to produce millions and even billions of these things to get this thing to market. And I think that's the one thing that's holding up a lot of the battery technology. Uh, it's great what nanotubes can do and uh, nanospheres and things like that for battery technology, but can we get them to the place where you can just basically stamp them out in some type of a factory environment to where you can produce enough? Uh, it's nice to do these things in small amounts and stuff like that, and the performance is always great, but until you can manufacture it in a large amounts, it's just not quite the same deal. So here's hoping. And I've talked about this before. This is the top secret military spy plane, the X-37B. Well, it has just recently come back from two years in outer space. It's kind of like a smaller version, maybe, I don't know what, a quarter scale version or something like that of the space shuttle. And I think it's basically being used as a general purpose craft by the military for uh, different secret missions and classified missions, stuff like that. This uh, article is really nice because it gives you more detail. This particular one from the Telegraph gives a lot more detail, and I think some of their educated guesses are pretty pretty close and right on, but during the two-year orbit, some amateurs have actually tracked the positions of the of the craft in the sky, and they say it pretty much has been shadowing the Chinese space station that's up in the air, so that's one of the things it's been doing, too. There's also, because of the fact it has 
a cargo hold about big enough like to hold about what a pickup truck would hold. Uh, a lot of general equipment and stuff can be installed in there, listening devices, spying devices. They've also noticed some of the trajectories and the paths of this craft have taken it over the Middle East. So I'm sure if they had the equipment on board, they've used it for that reason too. But as far as some of the guesses of people saying that maybe it's uh, flying around to different areas and <coughs> grabbing up space uh, spy satellites and stuff like that, not really likely because if you would have to maneuver around and keep changing your orbit that much, even a craft this size, it just doesn't have the fuel capacity to keep maneuvering around and flying like that. It pretty much has to stay pretty close to a standard orbit, so they have to decide when they launch it what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. But after this landing, I guess the next mission, they're having a second mission following a year later. The next flight is planned for 2015. The project started with NASA before being handled to the, handed to the military seven years later and great, with great secrecy, heightened speculation about its purpose. Here's, here's a funny thing from Iran. This is a, the country that, you know, well, I'll just read it. Iran has described it as America's secret space warplane, hypothesizing that it was a version of the Predator drone adapted to fly beyond Earth's atmosphere. But the U.S. Air Force has always insisted it was never designed to carry weapons and was not part of a new space arms race. I'm not saying if the military could practically do it, they probably wouldn't try something like that, but <clears throat> excuse me, I think for um, as small in the space that it is, I think it's pretty much a general purpose vehicle too for, for spying, listening, and tracking, stuff like that. just seems to be more logical for the size and what it's, what it's able to do. In this last article from Slashdot, the FBI says it will hire no one who lies about illegal downloading. <clears throat> I like the way they really talk about this and... Uh, put it into terms like they don't even really seem to know the law themselves because it says, uh, well, I'll just read it here. FBI employee Steve Dupre explained how the FBI will ask people during interviews how many songs, movies, and books they have downloaded because the FBI considers it to be stealing. Now, if anybody knows law whatsoever, and you don't even need to be an amateur lawyer to even know this, it's called copyright infringement. To steal something from somebody, you have to actually deny them the possession that to whatever it is, you know, you're denying them the use of a possession. You're taking it away and they can no longer use it. You're just, by copyright infringement, you're just making a copy of it. So the original owner has no way of, you know, you have no way of denying the original owner the use of whatever. So that's why copyright infringement law is written different and is just totally different than what stealing is. So I'm kind of wondering, uh, because of this, uh, the way that they're conducting their new interviews for new recruits, if they're going to find much of anybody useful under 30 years of age that's never downloaded a music or a book or a, a movie, something like that. I mean, maybe applicants 40 years of age and older, possibly, but I think they kind of need to get with it and get into the new era that um, just because somebody has downloaded a movie or a book or something like that does not mean they're not necessarily going to be a, a decent FBI employee. And I think the FBI should get on the stick and... Uh, properly know what the law is. If you're going to enforce the law, at least know what it's called. And uh, copyright infringement is not stealing. They're two different, two different complete things. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Thank you very much for all of my contributors for sending stuff in. I will catch you next week.